it is us to be forgiven, and we sin, Adam sin, what, what, what to do, what, 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 you know, Adam sin, let's say, and his mistake, has nothing to do with me, I mean, I, had, I didn't commit that thing, I didn't do it, why I'm inheriting that sin, that's what, what the Christian believes, adding to this, in order for that sin, someone has to die, you understand, that's more severe. And this someone, because God, God himself became in the form of a man as his son and killed himself on the cross, that's the way he came from the cross. Totally contradiction and contradiction to each other. That's why I see it didn't make you couldn't conceive it because it didn't make sense. She was Catholic herself, by the way. She was Catholic. Yeah? MashaAllah, she was already Muslim, MashaAllah. Yeah, Allah bad. So that's why my my question is to you. If Islam makes sense to you, will you accept to be Muslim? Of course, yeah? I don't mind going. I don't have an issue with religion. Good. Yeah, that's why. If Islam makes sense, you will accept Islam today, yes? Good. Fine. Now, this book was revealed 1400 years ago. Upon Muhammad, peace be upon him. Let me give you a bit history about him. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was an illiterate man. He was unable to read and write. And he was an honorable figure in his community. People respect him. He was truthful. He was someone truthful. He was someone doesn't lie. He was someone known with that. But, you know, he never, he didn't know nothing about revelation or anything until when he was at the age of 40, God revealed to him the first revelation. And the first revelation came to him, read. And he said, I'm not a read. And I was affirming to him, read and read. Here, later on, with this concept, later on, the, the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the most people who are, like literally, they escalate in terms of knowledge during certain time. Nowadays, the people who went down, but in the past, that's how it was. Because Quran encourages us to read and to understand and to comprehend. Quran is not saying to us, you have a blind faith and then that's it. Quran, yeah, Quran told us to open our eye. You will find many verses in the Quran to say, ponder upon the creation of God. Ponder, look at the earth, look on yourself, think, ponder, understand. So God is not saying to us, okay, that's it. This is God and that, you know, don't think about it. No, it's not like this. God is saying to us to ponder, to think. That's why God has honored those people who are scholars, honored them, put them in the highest status. Why? Because they understand, they have better, under, they have the best understanding and they educate others. Yeah, so that's a great thing in Islam. Yeah. Now, adding to this, this Quran came itself. It came in Arabic language, and it's preserved in Arabic language. So now, currently, oh God has said when God has revealed the Quran, we have sent down this remembrance, and we will be preserving it. So God has a promise to preserve the Quran. How is it preserved now? It was memorized from day one at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him until now, memorized by heart and as well written. So that's why now we have nearly 15 million Muslims on earth. They memorize the Quran in Arabic language with, with vowels with everything from cover to cover, all of it. So even if you get the whole Quran, which is the text one, and you burn them on the same day, we'll bring something because it's, it's, it's memorized. You understand? This is a great thing in Islam. Yeah. And look at this. These are, when you see this, you'll see the miracles of God in the, in the Quran. The language of the Quran is so miraculous. In a way, it made the Arabs at that time to say, this speech, it cannot be said by a human being. The eloquency and the way the structure of the, it's, it's, is beyond imagination. Yeah? But now, what's your name, by the way? Alexi. Alexi. But how Alexi, who speaks English, how can she appreciate the information in the Quran? Now, here is the question. Alexi, but Alexi, you studied some science, I assume. Alexi is someone who uses her mind and uses her intellect. She's an intelligent lady, intelligent young, young uh, lady. And she uses her intellect to understand the things around her, yes? And now, Alexi knows that 1400 years ago, I'm asking you this question, 1400 years ago, is it possible for someone to have knowledge about what has in, what is happening in the space and cosmology and things like this. Is there any possibility? No. 
So God has said in the Quran, look at this. When in the night, when you look to the stars, yeah, what do you see? You see the stars, yes? You see the stars now? You see the stars when? When the light departed from the stars millions of years ago, yes? Which means by the time when that light departs until it reaches you, it takes millions of years. Meaning at this moment, that star is not there. Yes? When we discovered this recently, in the last 100, 150 years ago, we discovered this. Yeah? Look at the amazing thing in the Quran. Allah told us in the Quran, I will not make an oath by the positions of the stars. Yeah? Yeah? Allah said, this is the top of the Christian Bible we find. By this. Yeah, that's right. Allah said, we will not make, I will not make an oath by the positions of the stars. And it's a great oath. But you are not yet aware of it. So God is saying to the, to the Prophet, his open him and his people, you are not yet aware of this. Positions of the stars. Now the people they said position of the stars in the past the the star this star give us the position of the east the position of the west that's how they used to think. But now when God now when we ponder upon the the contemporary science and then we found this is a fact. Now these stars are millions of years away from us, which means when you stare at the star in the night, you are staring at the position of the star when the light departed from it millions of years ago. The question is to you, Alexi. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? Yes. Tell me. Yes, I, I want to hear it. Yeah? I want to hear it. God, okay, good. Next step. Now, is it coincident? Let's assume it's a coincident. One of Another, another verse, why the stars are not in their position? Because the universe is, what does it do? Expanding, yes? That's why when the universe expands, the stars move, yes? So because the universe is expanding. So and then we have another verse in the Quran. It says, we have created the heavens and we are expanding it. Is it another coincidence, Alexi? Tell me. Can someone who is a literate man 1400 years ago saying this fact? Listen. So who said it? The one who knows God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Another, another thing. Now, what do you think the deepest point any diver could die 1400 years ago? Not very far. 15. 20 meters, whatever. Do you think anyone would know what is what is happening deep in the ocean? Is there a possibility? No. So someone who is living in the desert, in the Arab Peninsula, desert, he's not even by the sea. So God has said, those who are away from the guidance of God, those who are away from the guidance of God, like someone who's deep in the bottom of the ocean, above him there is a wave. Above the wave, there is another wave. Above the sea, there is a cloud. If he took his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness upon darkness, and whomever God doesn't show him the guidance of the light, then he will be misguided. Now, look at this. So here, if the, when the sunlight comes to the earth, and if it's a cloudy weather, then this cloud will prevent the light to go in. 40% of that will be reflected back and 60% will go through. These 60%, if it's a cloudy weather. So if there is surface waves on the surface of the ocean, what does the wave does to the light? If you understand the physics, it breaks the light. It breaks the light. So this 60%, when it, when it, is, when it, when it hit the surface of the ocean, which has waves, it get broke. Yeah, or get broken. And only half of that, barely half of that, will penetrate through. Yeah? Everyone could appreciate the surface waves. And maybe someone, maybe in a, 
you know, on a day which is the, the waves, is, you know, it's happening on the surface of the ocean. Maybe someone died and looked up, could be. But later on, we discovered again a few, maybe a couple of hundred years ago, maximum, that deep in the ocean, there is another layer of waves. That waves they are called sea current. Have you heard about it? So the sea current, they travel by waves. Yeah, by waves. So they travel by waves underneath the ocean, deep in the ocean, and they travel in a different direction. So you'll find the surface going in this direction, the sea current goes in that direction. Adding to this, they find as well two layers of the ocean. There is the upper layer, which is known. They find in the bottom of the ocean, there's another sea with difficult salt amount, with different salt amount, with different density, etc. And they have a layer, and it, and it could have waves in a different direction than the surface waves of the ocean, yeah? Meaning whatever remains from this light, it will get broke again from what? From that other layer of the, of the waves that goes in a different direction. And deep in the ocean, if someone took his hand out of his pocket and looked at it like this, he will be unable to see. This is in a time that the people used to think that the eye could see by itself. Now the question is to you, Alexi. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? Now, do you agree that this Quran came from God? I think I would want to do more research. I, so here's the thing. We have, we, have, we have an agreement in the beginning, yeah? Yeah. I told you, if we prove that this book came from God, that was an agreement. You said it's important to question, yes. right? So I think I'm Good. interested in doing more questions. I will Good. read it. Yeah. I will do more research on my own. Yes. Now, I will tell you another thing. You see here, when we are having this Quran, yeah, since we have it, either this book came from God, which we agreed there is God, or this book was inspired by the devil to Muhammad, or this book was the work of Muhammad, he did himself, he made it up for himself. And we said it's impossible to make it up for himself for this information that I told. And by the way, the Quran is full of this. The Quran talks about the fetus, the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother. How it developed. The Quran discussed about it. I, I can't make an opinion until I read it for myself. Yeah, yeah. I would have to read it for myself. Yeah, yeah I, will, I will show you. By the way, we, we have, we have different ones. By the way, we have, we have some, yeah. Yeah, we have some uh, we have some books. Brother, can you give me the book about the science? And, uh, yeah. Check the black box. Check the black box. You see here, everything I'm, I'm saying to you is documented. I could show you now. You want me to show you the verses that I told you? I would also. I think I'd be interested in. Yeah. yeah. For example, here. All the things that I mentioned to you here, and the quotation of the verse. The verses are here, all of, all of them, and you have the Quran there, and you could, you could, you could check it. Yeah, all, all what I told you. Now, I told you either the Quran was inspired by the devil, or the Quran was the work of Muhammad, or the Quran was inspired by God. Do you have any other option? So, if it was inspired by the devil, yeah, you'll find in the Quran God has cursed the devil many times. And God has warned us not to follow the footstep of the devil. If it was inspired by the devil, do you think he will put this about himself there? No. So the next day is impossible for Muhammad to produce this information when he was a literate man and he never attribute. If someone said information, everyone preferred to put this to him. Yes, it's my research, it's my done. Then he said all this came from God. Adding to this, God as well has criticized Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Quran. For example, yeah, for example, in some some places, God has said to Muhammad, peace be upon him, May Allah forgive you, why have you done that? You know, saying to him, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. So he was criticized by God about this. Even one of the incidents, one day he was calling people, the elite people of his tribe, calling them to Islam, yeah? And they get him angry, they were saying things about Islam and about God, etc. And then he was angry. And they left. As soon as they left, there is a believer, a blind man who was a believer, entered just as soon as those people left. Yeah? So Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was angry. He had, a, he had an angry face. He was, he showed an angry face. 
So then when he had this angry face, this blind man came to ask him about certain things about his faith. So Muhammad peace be upon him, he answered him, but he had an angry face. Yeah? So God has criticized him in the Quran saying to Abbas, you showed a grumpy face, you showed an angry face. The, the blind man didn't see it. No one witnessed this except God. No one was there in the room except God. Uh, sorry, no one was in the room except Muhammad peace be upon him and the blind man. And the one, the one who's the, the, the extra witness, it was who? Was Muhammad peace be upon him and that blind man. And they didn't see it. And he didn't see it, I mean, so, himself. Who saw that? Muhammad peace be upon him and the one who has created the heavens and the earth, Allah. He saw this. That's why God has said, you shouldn't have done that. So if it was his work, will he put himself under criticism in his own book? Yeah? Yeah, I, I understand now, but our agreement initially was what? Was if, if Islam makes sense to you and if I prove to you this Quran came from God, then you will be becoming a Muslim. That was the agreement. And it makes sense to you. I just, I can't just jump into it. I want to do my own research. I want to see if it's, if it's something that I can, you know, fully commit myself to, right? This isn't enough. I have to be able to fully commit myself to it. Yes. So that means I have to do my own research. I That's good. To, we are we are encouraging you, by the way. Islam is teaching you. We're encouraging you to do your research. We're encouraging you to open your mind and heart for the truth. Islam doesn't tell you to blind follow. Yeah. Islam tells you to open your mind and heart and to read and to study and to understand, Islam is encouraging you to do it. And actually, and the advice is, since what I told you, what I told you so far, does Islam make sense to you? From what I told you? It's, it's something that I'd be interested in. From what I told you, just from what I told you, just does it make sense to you? Yeah. So that's why my advice to you is no problem, study Islam from within Islam. That's how we do as Muslims. Yeah. How, many, how many years are you Muslim? 25? 25 years. Are you still studying Islam? That's how it is. So, oh, which means biggest criticisms with Christianity is that they encourage just blind worship. I can't. And we uh, we don't say blind worship. We say to you, no worship, but after understanding and after have a, a, a comprehending and after knowing what God wants from you, and then as simple as that. So everything in Islam makes sense. That's why we have. A very structured way. Like, for example, if I said to this brother, or I said to this sister, for example, I would say to the sister here, I would say to you, you know what, in order to worship God, you have to jump 100 times in your spot. What you will say to me? Why not? Why you not do it? Because you, there is no, no evidence. Do you see that? Do you, you hear this? That is how we say no. We need an evidence. We cannot worship God until we see evidence. What's the evidence? Either I have to bring here a verse from the Quran or authentic hadith from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Yeah? Wait, authentic hadith are from. There are there multiple translations? There are different translations, but this is one of the good good ones and decent ones. You this read is. the like, original Arabic? Yes. And you think this is like a This is a very good translation, okay. actually. This is one of the. Do you have, you have, do you have yes. a copy? I have yeah? Here. Okay, good. So you see here, that's the beauty of it. So everything, no one, yeah, we, we try to give it to non-Muslims. Uh, yeah, we try to give it to non-Muslims. Okay. Yeah, you see here, the point is, we always we are very critical about, about the information and about knowing if the information has authentic source. And if it has authentic source, we have to verify, then we practice. It's not just only, it's there, and then that's it. It's not like that. You see how it is? So amazing. Now here, do you, in your, in your heart now, do you feel that Islam is actually according to what you have said so far? Do you think Islam is one of the best, one of the best, let's say, religion, that at least they have these practices? Yeah, it sounds better than, I have 12 years experience with Christianity, but this sounds, it sounds like something that's a bit more compatible with me, something that I I would be interested in exploring further. Okay. Um, so Ask your questions. So the place of worship is a mosque, right? Are yes. they open to anybody or yes. do you have to They're open to anybody. You just walk in? You just walk in. Okay. Just walk in. And then if you have if there's someone with knowledge 
they will advise you, they will teach you, whatever. That's generally for everyone. It's open for everyone, and anyone is able to come, and anyone is coming to understand. That's why, that's why we are urging you. To, we are saying to you. That's why I will tell you something, sister. Since Islam makes sense, let's say at least to you to some extent. My advice to you, since at least have that the feel belonging to the faith which is true, which proven to be true. It's not just something which is could be or a probability, something which is proven to be true. That's why you will find you are from the United States, yes? yes. There is a lecturer, I think he's a mathematician. He used to be atheist all his life, he's living in Jeffrey Lang. Yeah? Just you could Google him and you could find his story about Islam. And he said a profound statement about the Quran. He said the Quran, when you read the Quran, you will be in one of the two positions. Either you pretend you never heard about it and as if it doesn't exist and move on in your life. But since if you agree that it is, it exists and it's something that you know about it, you have to follow it and accept it. You see, someone in math, he used to be the president of atheist society in his own college. He was, the, he was literally the president of the atheist society. And then when he read the Quran, when he studied the Quran, when he understood the Quran, he became Muslim. What made someone like him with that caliber accepting Islam? A professor, he doesn't even know, but why he accepted? So Islam attracts those people who are educated, those people who are willing, those people who open their mind and heart to the truth. Islam attracts those individuals and that's what matters. So that's what we say to you. You read and there are many amazing information in the Quran. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Talk about stories of the people before us. Talks about the people that are us nowadays was happening. Talk about the things that you come. Those are prophecies as well. Talks about information. Talks about things which is which is you know uh, not quran is not science book but quran has facts quran is not historical books but it has historical facts facts beyond any doubt yeah facts talks about certain things in history that happens and actually the new history they discovered is the truth there's something it's no one can doubt about it. like one of the one of the small examples i generally use like when you're uh, uh, about, for example, the period at the time of Joseph and the period at the time of Moses in Egypt, there is, I, I don't know if there's 600 or 1,000 year gap between both of them, between Joseph and Moses. And there is no information at that time or historical information about apart from the Bible. Yeah, the Bible used to be the source for the history at that time. And the Bible described the king at the time of Joseph was Pharaoh. And the king at the time of Joseph was Pharaoh. So everyone, they say Pharaoh there, Pharaoh here, it's, fine, it's, it's okay. Until recently, until only nearly 100 and something years ago, when they discovered something called risotto stone. You heard about it? From risotto stone, they actually dismantled the hieroglyphic language. They start now understanding what's written on these pyramids and monuments and these scrolls. They discovered what's written now. They start to understand what's going on now there. Because it translated from hieroglyphic to Greek to Latin. Yeah? And then they start to understand what's happening now here. And then they discovered historical fact. During the time of Moses, the title of the king was Pharaoh. But before that, during the time of Joseph, it's impossible for the king in Egypt to be called Pharaoh. Do you know why? Because at, during that time, Hexos, which is a Mediterranean rain, which they rule nowadays Syria, which is Levant in that time, part of Turkey, part of Greece, etc. And they came and they ruled Egypt. And they were kings. They never used the term pharaoh. So kings, just like for example, you know, Eng England, uh, the king of England ruled Egypt at a certain point. But when he was ruling, never he was he was called king. Yeah, he was never called pharaoh. You understand? Now Egypt it has a president. We cannot call pharaoh about him. You understand? It's not the term that's used. So it's a historical error to call the king of uh, the, the president of Egypt now. It's a, it's, a, it's a mistake, it's an error to call him Pharaoh. Am I right? So that's why in, in Bible, they, desc they describe him to be Pharaoh. In the Quran, you will find the story of Moses scattered around the Quran and always talking about Moses and Pharaoh, Pharaoh and Moses, Moses and Harun, his brother and Pharaoh, talking about that. But there is one single chapter talking about Joseph. And in that chapter, strictly talking about 
king, Joseph and the king, king and Joseph. In the past, Christian, they said, you Muslim, you got it wrong because he should be a pharaoh. He said, since it's from God, we didn't know at that time, since it's from God, we accept it. Until we discover it is true, it's historical. King at the time of Joseph is a king, king at the time of Moses is pharaoh. Who told Muhammad about this? Bear in mind, Muhammad was an illiterate man. He was unable to read Arabic, let alone to read other languages. Who taught him? Tell me, Alexei, your intelligence there. Tell me. God. Now, from what we have discussed, do you accept there is one God? Do you accept Muhammad to be a prophet sent by God? So that means, Alexei, you're a Muslim. Wait, is that really all it takes? Yes, that's how it takes. No, nothing, no, no. No process. Just only testify what you know, what you said now. To testify, there is no one worthy to be worshipped except one God. Allah means the one God, by the way. And to testify that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, that's all. Nothing else. Really, that's as simple it's as that. So, it's so complicated in Judaism. I know, so complicated. Judaism is so complicated. And there is no pool you need to jump in. To, there is nothing like this. Just only that. Okay. If you to say it, and then that's it. Nothing else, no more, no less. What you said it, just say it. Yeah? You want to say it? Yeah. So, to say, I will say it in English. Yeah? And then we'll say it in Arabic. Yeah? To say, I testify that there is no one worthy to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, Arabic. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulu Allah. MashaAllah. That's it, that's it. Ya, welcome. Oh, you cried. Uh, said the shahada as well. Yeah, she's happy for you. We are all happy for you. We are all happy for you. You are welcome. She said it as well. Is that how much you love her? Wow. See here, sister. Yeah, she said she wanted to come, so I was like, okay, let's go. She said she really wanted to come here specifically. So I was like, okay, Grandma, we were off work, let's come together. Just the <laughs> there, are, there are no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. And one of the reasons that Allah brought you to us today here. And we are happy having you as a sister in Islam. We are happy having you as part of us, this community of Muslims. That's how it is so simple as that. That's how it is the process of Islam. And that's why remember, be grateful to the Creator. Be grateful to God. Be grateful that you have an amazing grandmother like her. Like her. I miss my grandmother and going to back home and go there. You know? You know, you are amazing. You are both of you are amazing ladies. May Allah bless you both. May Allah increase you both in, in, in all goodness. And we are happy having you as sisters in Islam. We are all happy. Seriously, we are happy for you as a sister in Islam. If you want, we have if we have a, a, a platform for question and answers about Islam. The sister, inshallah, she can take. If you want it to be added to it, then it will be easier for you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, my brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jalla has guided this sister to Islam. May Allah bless her. May Allah increase her. Okay.